Hello, my name is Keith Watts and I head up the Verba International Organisation over London who brings the Euro exams across the Russian Federation. And today we are going to tackle that rather challenging task of finding some useful tips for the reading exam. Students taking the examinations across the Russian Federation can either take the Euro exam written paper or the spoken paper, or indeed both. Today, we are going to focus on just one aspect of the written exam, the reading paper. As we've done for other coffee shop lessons where we look at the structure, Today, we'll look at the structure of the exam and find ways of making simple improvements. Improvements we can make to the marks without the students really having to learn any more language. Depending on the level, the exam will take, or the reading part, will take between about 25 minutes to 45 minutes. Clearly, as we progress from A1 to C1, then the test does get a little longer. There are three tasks. The first one being paragraph headings. The second is a scan reading task. And the third is a multiple choice reading in detail. And these replicate many of the skills we use when we are using English for reading. For the written papers, students tend to have adequate time. In fact, A1, A2 and B1, they have plenty of time to check and recheck. Time is a little tighter when it comes to B2 and C1. What we tend to find, though, is students do understand what is required of them. It's just actually the carrying out of the reading tasks that some might find a little harder. And this coffee shop lesson aims to address that. In fact, at A1 and A2, reading is a strong skill. Whereas at B1 and B2, frequently, it's the one that candidates find easiest and score the highest marks on. So reading is actually nothing to worry about. But as I said, we can actually get some little bit better marks if we wish. So let's look at the specific tasks. As I said, there are three tasks. We'll start with task one. Now, normally task one will be a paragraph headings, but at A1, that's slightly more difficult for the students. So the exam board, very much focusing A1 at the younger learner, has devised a test which simply means matching the pictures to the short reading description. Now at A2 and above, true heading matching comes into play. And there's an example that we see the, there on the right. Students are expected to, as the title says, choose from A to G the appropriate heading for the paragraph. And there will always be some answers that the students do not need. This pattern continues through to both B1 and B2. Clearly, the text get more complex, the language gets more complex. But the whole design of it is such that right through from A1 to C1, the structure is similar. Task two is a scan reading task. At A1, this is the simplest. The students are looking to find information, maybe from a set of cards printed on the question paper. At higher levels, again, the structure stays similar. What the candidate is expected to do is to find which paragraph gives them that piece of information. And as you might guess, this doesn't change when we get to B1 and B2. Just the language gets harder. And this, in fact, is a B2 example. The key thing about scan reading is the task is to find specific information. The students do not need to understand the complete passage. A good example and a way of attacking this is as follows. 
If I was doing it, I would simply work down the list. So, for example, looking at this A1 example, you can have your lunch here before noon. So, which is served from before noon? A quick scan of it is it's got to be B. Everything else is from either 12 p.m., 12 noon or onwards. Let's look at the second one. You can't sit and eat here. A quick scan read, served, served. Oh, look at E, it's takeaway only. You can't sit and eat at a takeaway. So therefore, we are looking, we are working down the list, looking for the right information and just the information that's required. Teachers often struggle to teach scan reading. So, but scan reading comes up in all the very best class books. And this particular textbook, optimized from Macmillan at A2, We've got a task there, number three. But if we're going to give it to students as a scan reading exercise, set and strictly enforce time limits. And we all have facilities of doing that in the class now. We all have mobile phones. Use the stopwatch function. Quite frequently, trying to persuade students to read quickly is very challenging. Here we can do it quite naturally and the resources are in our book. Task three is a multiple choice question, and this comes from a longer piece of text. Just like those who take the listening part, where task three is the longer continuous radio program, task three in the writing has a similar structure. In the case of A1, though, the exam board at Euro exam has to change that slightly to make it simpler and suitable for younger learners at A1. So it becomes almost a gap fill reading exercise. At A2 and above, we have a continuous text where the student is expected to read it, comprehend most of it. Again, there will always be words that the student doesn't recognize and then match it to the relevant question answer. Again, Again, this carries through for B1 and B2. In this particular example, it's again a B2 example. So this candidate is reading for, in this case, reading for detail. So what tricks and tips can the student and candidates employ? And can you employ it in your teaching? Firstly, and this is critically important, Reading is frequently about understanding words. As I said, on most occasions, it doesn't matter if the student doesn't understand a particular word, but there will be words they need to know. Besides that, in the whole written exam, the student will also be undertaking a writing test. So having their own dictionary, it can be English, English, it can be English, Russian, Russian, English, or whichever their native language is is perfectly acceptable. The only thing it cannot be is electronic because as invigilators, you don't know what else is on the phone. So phones have to be left outside. But otherwise, any paper-based dictionary is absolutely perfect and the most vital tool in language exams. The second point is to encourage students to be prepared to change their mind. Sometimes we can get so fixed on the answer that we have given, we sometimes miss the others. Also, when you get to the end of a task, look at the answers you didn't use. Just check to see if they will fit elsewhere. So in this particular example, we won't be using B, but it is worth looking at questions one to five to say, does B fit anywhere? If it does, then you've probably made a mistake. So when checking the work, don't just check the answers you have used, check those you haven't. Another little trick is get yourself a set of highlighter pens. That way we can highlight keywords in the question and match them to keywords in the text. And certainly if you are doing B1, B2 or C1, this really is an excellent bit of advice.
in Euro exam to you can write all over your papers. You can draw pictures of your pet dog if you wish. You probably won't have time, but you can write and make notes on your papers. So even if you don't use a highlighter pen, maybe underline and put some arrows to some key words so that you can check and come back later. Another useful bit of advice, as well as making notes on your question paper, is watch when you are moving or transferring your answers from your worksheet, from your question paper, to your answer sheet. It is easy to slip a line. You have time in the exam to do it. It is part of the allocated time. But make sure you do it carefully and you check it. Having done all the fantastic work of getting the right answers, you'd hate to make put the wrong answers down on your answer sheet. One thing you can do when you're learning, though, is not just learn and be very pleased with the answers you've got right, but in your classroom, have a look and understand and maybe get your teacher to understand why you've made the mistakes you have. Is it you, that you've got a incorrect understanding of a word or phrase? If so, without working with your teacher, you'll never correct it. And we need to correct the mistakes. It might also be that you simply copied it down wrong, in which case that will tell you to be a bit more careful in the future. So whenever you are doing a reading task, don't just be pleased with yourself with the ones you've got right, but use the ones you haven't got right as a better learning experience. Another bit of advice is whatever you're reading, wherever you find it, make a note of any new words. That way you will increase your vocabulary very, very fast. Even if you've looked in a dictionary, maybe discuss the word with the teacher. Maybe talk to fr ask friends how they would use it. The more we talk about the word, talk about a piece of vocabulary, or indeed about a bit of grammar, the more we get used to it, we remember it. Of course, the most important thing you can do to improve your reading is, you've guessed it, to read. But it doesn't have to be academic reading. It can be anything you enjoy, whether it's your favourite fashion magazines or sports or internet websites, uh, Harry Potter, favourite books. It really doesn't matter. The important thing is that you read and you'll only read it if you enjoy it. It is useful, as I said, if you make a few notes of words that are new to you and discuss it with your teacher. But the most important thing is getting your nose in a book or on the website and just reading in English. So there we are, a very short coffee shop lesson about the reading exam, the structure and a few tips. If you have found it useful, please do subscribe and like this video. It's been great to speak to you. And on the next slide, I'll just briefly explain how you can get in touch with me. And indeed, if you wish, have some lessons with me. Here are my contact details. It is always a great pleasure for me to travel across Russia, meeting so many wonderful students and indeed working with the brilliant schools that produce English to such a high level. The Euro exams are a great way, even at A1 and lower levels, of being able to prove your ability, demonstrate your progress, show that you can speak English either in a written form or in with working with native English speakers such as myself. And if you'd like it, uh, to have lessons with me, I'm here, I'm available. Please contact me at the details below and we'll see what we can do. Very best wishes. I look forward to joining you for the next coffee shop lesson.